Coming up on Cardinals Insider, we pay special tribute to Adam Wainwright's place in Cardinals history. Also coming up, we relive the 1982 World Series 40 years later. But I just knew we were good. I knew we were good, and it was September. It was all came down to September. Then later on, get to know two-time minor league pitcher of the month, Gordon Guseffo. It's all an adjustment process, and as you go through, you see what works against hitters and what doesn't. Those stories and more ahead on this week's Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. We're marking the close of an era with our series, The Last Inning. Today's episode centers around Adam Wainwright. Waino is yet to decide if he'll retire, but regardless, he has played an important role in the past two decades of Cardinals baseball. In the air left field and Pools has given St. Louis the lead. This ball is gone. Two run home run. Yeah. 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 The Cardinals are world champions for 2000. Could you ever have imagined it end up like this? You didn't end up pitching in Georgia, but you took your place in a long line of Bulldogs. Bush Stadium, two decades on the hill. Uncle Charlie at Shea. World Series swing and a miss. Friends for a lifetime. And a brother you didn't know you had. And if you can believe it, those aren't even the best parts. You made people smile by just showing up. Reinvented the way we think about charity work, helping bring food and water to those who need it most, and rallied athletes and entertainers to make an impact. That day as a high school kid, could you ever have imagined all of this? Baseball, like life, rewards those who find a way to finish what they started. And you, Wayno, always finish the job. So we'll take however many more you've got in you. Because you may not have expected it to go like this, but man, we're so glad it did. It feels like Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright have always been franchise legends. But you could argue that their pursuit of the record for starts by a battery almost never got off the ground. Here's more during the second installment of The Chase for 325, presented by Cardinals Magazine. back to where we drafted Yadier Molina and here's a young man that that I remember talk, talking to the scout who, who recommended him and we were talking about like his signing bonus and um, I asked him like what he would recommend and he said to me on the phone he's like whatever he asked for just give it to him. He went to a tryout in 2000 when he got drafted by the Cardinals. Uh, he went to a tryout before that in Cincinnati, and they had uh, they had him doing the tryouts, normal tryouts, running, throwing, hitting, uh, catching. Johnny Bench said something to Yadi's agent, said, "Hey, this is our guy, Johnny Bench. Come on, catcher. He knows what he's what he's seeing." And he thought he was going to be first, second pick, uh, maybe third pick of the Reds. That's what he came out out of there. And before you know it. Four rounds went by, and I heard people say that he was going to be picked next by the Reds in the fourth, but the Cardinals just, just picked him up. 
you know, he stepped right in, and from day one, he was always like known as just a very good defensive catcher. And subsequently, um, I think we always promoted him faster than really we allowed his offense to catch up, but he ended up being one of the greatest catchers to ever play the game. When uh, Wayno came up for his debut, his debut did not go that well. The end of the season came and, and Wayno knew that he would not make the, the postseason roster, but uh, Wayno did think that he would be around the team for the playoffs, which uh, often happens, you know, when the game started, he was with the other extra guys, you know, watching from the bullpen or wherever. And then uh, game two comes, so that's the big day. Wayno brings his suitcase in, he's dressed up, he's like he's gone on the trip. So uh, Wayno goes in, see Tony. Skipper, am I going on the trip? Tony was quite blunt, said no. And when you get home, you've got a lot of stuff you need to work on. And that is something that the greatest athletes do, is they find some sort of a, a slight, and then they go from there. And for, for Adam, I believe that that was a slight to him. He believed that he should have been a part of that, wanted to be around the team, and wanted to be you know, in that atmosphere, and it wasn't there for him. And it was kind of a driving force for him. He comes to realize, you know, these guys are pretty smart guys. Maybe it's not their issue. Maybe the problem is me. You know, motivation is a scary drug, and when you put a chip on a potential superstar's shoulder, it turned him into this a different human being, a different competitor. It, he went from a, he's gonna make, be, become a big leaguer to, man, this guy's a dude. 40 years ago, my teammates and I beat the Milwaukee Brewers in seven games to win the 1982 World Series. We all gathered in St. Louis for a reunion recently. Here's how we remember the Cardinals ninth World Series title. So it was our generation that came up to make that transition. We were the transitional team, and then to be succeed and bring a world championship, along with all the other ones in the past. It was a very prideful thing for me, and I know for all my teammates. We played good at critical parts of the season. You know, we hung in there early. You know, that served its purpose to, to tell us that we could play with the Phillies and the Pirates and the Expos, the great teams in our division at that time. Once we got over that hump of, of believing in ourselves that we could play with these teams, then critical parts of the season come up. And, and obviously, uh, we played very well going down the stretch. But I just knew we were good. I knew we were good, and it was September. It was all came down to September. During the course of a season where you're in the hunt, you know, little there, there, there's always building blocks that get you to where you need to be at the end. That was the same with us. I, I think a team built on speed and defense and pitching has a chance to be more consistent than just a team that relies on power. Even if we didn't win it, we were exciting to watch because of the speed and the defense. And I think it really caught the, uh, the attention of the, the Cardinal fan base, which for me is the best in all of baseball. Suter from the belt to the plate. A swing and a miss, and that's a winner! That's a winner! A World Series winner for the Cardinals! Porter throws his mask into the air. The players converge around the mound. The police arrive on And the now, coming in from right field, the team that brought St. Louis its ninth World Series championship. Let's hear it for the architect, Hall of Famer, the manager, the White Rat, Whitey Herzog, first baseman, Cardinals Hall of Famer, Keith Hernandez. A 2022 Major League Baseball Hall of Fame inductee, pitcher Jim Cott. Starting second baseman, Cardinals Hall of Famer, Tom Kerr. Cardinals Hall of Famer, Cardinals coach, Willie. McGee. And 
finally, Hall of Famer, Ozzie Smith. Back in grand fashion, ladies and gentlemen, your 1982 World Series champion, St. Louis Cardinals. In just a bit, he was a key part of the 60s Cardinals. Javier spears the ball backhanded, flips it to Maxville. It's a double play, and what a play. Get to know Julian Javier. Play is a joint venture between the Baseball Athletic Trainer Society and the Taylor Hooten Foundation. It's a youth baseball clinic that gets kids moving and educates them on the dangers of steroids. So Play Ball is a Major League Baseball initiative for all of the Major League teams as well as the Minor League teams and in their communities to celebrate the game of baseball and get kids out playing ball. We broke it up in a couple different age groups. So the younger children, ages 5 to 7, are able to come down and run the bases. The older children, ages 8 to 13, they're part of a clinic. And so there's a clinic with five different stations. Uh, we have some of our alumni here that are running the stations. Uh, Scott Terry, who runs our alumni clinics and does such a wonderful job, he's kind of over everything and making sure everything runs smoothly. But uh, that's how we chose to break it down. So we gave the kids a chance to come into the ballpark. Big hand for Aiden, everybody. Wow. Hi, everybody. I'm Aiden. We want kids to play the game. We want them to play baseball. We want them to play softball. We want them to be interested in the game. If you get a chance, you know, hopefully they watch on TV or hopefully they've been to a ball game and you're sitting in the stands or you're watching from home and you see this field, but then you get to come down here as a kid, that's a big deal. And it's a unique opportunity for the kids that we're able to register. Um, we do as much as we can to stay in tune with the community. So this initiative helped us do a couple things. Uh, it helped us get kids playing and it helped them get it here into the ballpark and hopefully this is something they'll always remember and, and want to come back. Still to come. Some of my breaking pitches have definitely uh, switched it up a little bit. Pitching prospect Gordon Guseffo discusses his breakout season. Stay with us. Julian Javier is a part of this year's Cardinals Hall of Fame class. He was a key member of the 60s Cardinals, which won three pennants. Here's more on the sure-handed second baseman. The 1960s was one of the best eras in Cardinals history, and an argument exists for it being one of the best decades by any team in baseball history. At the middle of it all, quite literally, was second baseman Julian Javier. Javier spears the ball backhanded, flips it to Maxville, it's a double play and what a play. He was sure-handed with good range, making him the Cards primary second baseman for 12 seasons. On a team loaded with stars, history often doesn't give Javier enough credit. He was a two-time world champion and a three-time pennant winner. He also was one of the earliest prominent Dominican big leaguers, laying the groundwork for so many of today's stars. Defense has come to define his career, but Javier was a solid offensive player too. Javier pulls round boards, first pitch into the left field corner for a double, and that wrecks the no-hitter. Three times he posted double-digit home run totals and was a career 258 hitter in St. Louis. Much of that was done during perhaps the greatest decade of pitching in baseball history. Javier was a two-time All-Star and finished top 10 in the 1967 MVP voting. All that has earned him a spot among the greatest Cardinals ever, forever remembered as a top-notch player from one of the best eras in club history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. The Cardinals selected Gordon Graceffo out of Villanova in the fifth round of the 2021 draft. As of early August, he had a sub-3 ERA logging innings at Springfield and Peoria. He's been the organization's minor league pitcher of the month twice this season. So let's get to know him better in this week's Farm Report. 
Well, Gordon, let's start with this. Congratulations, it's been a really great year. You know, uh, I think a lot of people in the organization knew about you, but a lot of fans maybe are learning about you and hearing your name for the first time. Just what has it been like going through this great run here? Yeah, first of all, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, I mean, it's been really fun. It was, uh, it was a long off season, worked, worked pretty hard to kind of put myself in the position that I try to be today. But um, yeah, I mean, it was fun to come out in spring training and just be in front of the whole organization and every minor leaguer and major leaguer on the, on the Cardinals. And I uh, just put myself in a try to put myself in a good position to succeed and I think it worked out. This is the level that, you know, some guys can kind of get eaten up here. This is where hitters start to really have an approach, pitchers yep. have a way they're starting to work guys. So for you to be able to excel means that you're kind of finding a lane and doing some things the way they need to be done. What do you think it is that you've done that's helped you to show up in a bigger way here instead of shrinking back? I just kind of continue to fine tune my stuff. i just trying to stay diligent in my work ethic. Uh, I mean, just trying to take something from every outing that I can work on and just get better for the next week. Just trying to hit all my spots, listen to my pitching coach, Darwin Marrero, listen to my catcher. Uh, just kind of just do my go out there and do my job, not trying to worry about and everything else. And just trying to have success here. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes Whitcomb out. So a pair of strikeouts here in the first inning for Gordon Graceffo. And the 2 2. And he takes this for strike three. Burned in by Graceffo. How would you describe the kind of pitcher that you are to somebody who maybe has never seen you before? I just like to attack the zone, uh, attack the hitter, just try to throw strikes in when I can and uh, in two strike counts, just try to finish the batter off. Like it's nothing, you just kind of try to keep it simple. There's nothing, you kind of just go out there and just do your job. The reality about pitching, and I think a lot of people maybe don't always realize it is, Oftentimes, for many guys in the bullpen, they don't feel like they have it 100% before a start, but you still got to go out there and try to get 27 outs or as many of the 27 as the manager needs. Mm -hmm. What's the key for you when, oh, it's not you know as crisp as I want it to be, but I'm going to still try to go out and shove? <laughs> uh, just preparation. It's It all comes down to how you prepare for that game because, I mean, as a starter, you pitch once a week. and. Once you're, once you pitch, that's it, and you just pre have to prepare for the next week. So it's, it's a blessing and a curse to be in that position. Because I mean, if you pitch well, you just kind of get to relax until your next start, and you just focus on what you could do better for the next start. It just comes down to preparation, scouting reports, going through what to do to each hitter, uh, with your pitching coach and your catcher, and just fine tuning all your stuff. Three, two, swing and a miss, strike three. Gordon back to the heater. Swing and a miss on a curve ball. Struck out Wickham for the third out. With your pitches, are they something you've known since early high school as far as grips, or have you added stuff as you've gotten into pro ball? I've definitely uh, switched some things around since I got into pro ball, just hearing from different players and coaches and stuff about what works and what doesn't work. Um, but yeah, some of my breaking pitches, I've definitely uh, switched it up a little bit. My fastball, I've kind of switched up a little bit from last year. So I mean, it's all an adjustment process, and as you go through, you see what works against hitters and what doesn't. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Claire from Tremont, Illinois asks, how often do you go to Cardinal games? Well, this year, uh, Claire, it's been a little bit more than um, years past. Uh, I usually am entertaining when I come to the ballpark. So I would say uh, I'm here at the ballpark probably 25 to 30 times a year. It gives me a chance to stay connected with the fans. And you know, it's nice to have a legacy where people remember where they were when certain things happen. And, uh, that happens a lot here with Cardinal Baseball. You know, people are, are weaned on baseball here in this town, and it's part of the, the fabric of our lives. So to have the opportunity to sit and visit with people and, and uh, hopefully for them to sit and watch a game with me uh, hopefully is enjoyable. Thanks for the question, Claire. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, stay with us. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. The Cardinal players are on TV every night. 
but they like to watch TV too. So what show would they love to make a guest appearance on? Let's find out in this week's Ask a Cardinal. There are so many. A guest appearance in a TV show. Probably The Office. Would be cool. I'll do a guest appearance in The Office. The Office is hands down my favorite show. I don't know if I would be good on it though, because I would just probably crack up laughing like every five seconds. My wife and I are big into Outlander right now. And I think, you know, Scottish, Irish, I think I could fit the bill like pre-colonial. I think I could dress it up. I think I could fit in. That's a tough one. Um, I would say when I was little, one of my favorite shows was Sweet Life on Deck with Zach and Cody. So probably that one. I would say that one. <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air, for sure. That's one of my favorites of all time, and it'd be, it'd be fun to be a part of that. Either Seinfeld or Entourage. I would love to hang out with that Seinfeld crew. I don't think I'd be able to last with like George Costanza and Kramer in there. And then Entourage, just hanging out with those guys. I feel like that'd be pretty cool for a day. Probably Game of Thrones. Grow the hair out a little bit more, maybe grow a little bit more of a beard and see if I could fit in. Or like. Uh, 1883, I'm watching that, that'd be cool. I could grow out a beard and like get on a horse, that'd be pretty neat. The show Turn, it's a, it's a show based on uh, a true story and it all took place in my uh, hometown about the first spy ring and it was back in the 1700s. Game of Thrones, that's like my all-time favorite show, so if I could get in Game of Thrones, that'd be awesome. I think I would like to ident identify as Jon Snow just because he's like the hero, but <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm that brave. The Office? I don't know where I could which one I could pull off, but uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Jim, maybe Jim, yeah. If you wanna be Jim, you gotta get your look to the camera, though. Oh, right, you're right. There we go, yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, right? That's all for this episode. Join us again next week, and as always, you can watch new episodes on YouTube or cardinals.com slash insider. And for everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and we'll see you next time.